Introduction Welcome, dear viewers, to another deep dive into the mysteries of the Bible. Today we're embarking on a journey through one of the most intense and dramatic parts of the Book of Revelation, the Seven Bowls of Wrath. These bowls represent the final outpouring of God's judgment on a world steeped in sin and rebellion. Get ready to explore the vivid imagery, powerful symbolism and profound messages that these passages hold. Setting the stage, understanding the context. Before we delve into each of the seven bowls, it's essential to understand the broader context of the Book of Revelation. Written by John of Patmos, Revelation is a prophetic vision given to him by Jesus Christ. It reveals the ultimate triumph of God over evil, the final judgment, and the establishment of a new heaven and new earth. The seven bowls of wrath are part of a series of judgments that include the seven seals and seven trumpets. These judgments intensify as they progress, leading to the final and most severe, the seven bowls. They are found in Revelation 16, a chapter that vividly describes God's unrestrained wrath against a rebellious world. The first bowl, painful sores. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. Revelation 16 2. The first bowl is a direct attack on those who have aligned themselves with the Antichrist bearing his mark and worshipping his image. This judgment brings painful festering sores upon them, reminiscent of the plagues of Egypt where boils afflicted the Egyptians. These sores symbolize both physical and spiritual corruption, highlighting the consequences of choosing evil over good. The second bowl sea turns to blood. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead person and every living thing in the sea died. Revelation 16.3. The second bowl impacts the sea, turning it into blood and causing the death of all marine life. This plague mirrors the first plague of Egypt, where the Nile turned to blood. The sea, often seen as a source of life and sustenance, becomes a symbol of death and destruction. This transformation signifies the complete and utter devastation that comes from divine judgment. The third bowl, rivers and springs, turn to blood. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Revelation 16.4 The third bowl extends the plague of blood to the rivers and springs, the sources of fresh water. This judgment underscores the severity of God's wrath, leaving no corner of the earth untouched. The angel of the waters proclaims the righteousness of God's judgment, declaring that those who shed the blood of saints and Prophets now have blood to drink as their just punishment. The fourth bowl, scorching sun. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat and they cursed the name of God who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. Revelation 16, 8, 9. The fourth bowl intensifies the heat of the sun, causing immense suffering as people are scorched by its fiery rays. Despite the excruciating pain, they curse God instead of repenting. This plague highlights the hardness of human hearts, illustrating that even in the face of undeniable divine judgment, many remain unrepentant and rebellious. The fifth bowl, darkness and pain. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. But they refused to repent of what they had done. Revelation 16, 10, 11. The fifth bowl brings darkness to the kingdom of the beast, causing intense pain and suffering. This judgment echoes the ninth plague of Egypt, where darkness covered the land. The people already suffering from sores now face an additional torment, yet they continue to curse God and refuse to repent. This persistent defiance against divine authority underscores the depth of their rebellion. The sixth bowl, the Euphrates, dried up. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for Iggy the kings from the east. Revelation 16.12 The sixth bowl dries up the Euphrates river, preparing the way for the kings of the east. This sets the stage for the Battle of Armageddon, where the forces of evil will gather for a final confrontation against God. The drying up of the river symbolizes the removal of barriers, allowing the forces of darkness to assemble for their ultimate defeat. The seventh bowl, the final judgment. 
The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne, saying, It is done! Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth, so tremendous was the quake. Revelation 16, 17, 18 The seventh bowl is the final act of judgment, bringing cataclysmic events upon the earth. A loud voice from the throne declares, It is done, signaling the completion of God's wrath. The severe earthquake, along with lightning, thunder and hailstones, signifies the end of the age and the beginning of God's eternal kingdom. The great city splits into three parts, the cities of the nations collapse, and every island and mountain disappear. This final bowl represents the ultimate dismantling of the old order, making way for the new heaven and new earth. Interpreting the seven bowls, themes and symbolism. The seven bowls of wrath are rich with themes and symbolism. Each bowl intensifies the previous judgments, showcasing the escalating nature of God's wrath against sin. The bowls reflect a complete and final judgment, leaving no aspect of creation unaffected. The recurring theme of unrepentance among those who suffer these plagues highlights the stubbornness of human rebellion and the justice of God's judgment. Theological Implications – Justice and Mercy The seven bowls of wrath also present profound theological implications. They underscore the righteousness and justice of God, who must judge sin and rebellion. Yet within these judgments there is a call to repentance. Despite the severity of the plagues, God's desire for repentance and redemption remains evident. The refusal of people to repent serves as a sobering reminder of the consequences of hardening one's heart against God. Historical and Eschatological Perspectives Historically, the imagery of the seven bowls draws from the Old Testament, particularly the plagues of Egypt, highlighting continuity in God's dealings with humanity. Eschatologically, these bowls point to the ultimate culmination of history, where God's judgment paves the way for the establishment of His eternal kingdom. The bowls serve as a bridge between the present age and the new creation, where God's justice and mercy are fully realized. Living in light of revelation, as we reflect on the seven bowls of wrath, it's crucial to consider how these passages impact our lives today. They call us to a sober awareness of God's holiness and the seriousness of sin. They also remind us of the hope we have in Christ who offers redemption and salvation. By aligning our lives with God's will, we can avoid the fate of those who face His wrath and instead embrace the promise of eternal life. Conclusion In conclusion, the seven bowls of wrath in Revelation offer a powerful and sobering vision of God's final judgment. They challenge us to consider the state of our hearts and our relationship with God. As we navigate the complexities of this world, may we hold fast to the hope and redemption offered through Jesus Christ, and live in a way that honors His righteousness and mercy. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Revelation. If you found this exploration insightful, please like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth biblical content. Until next time, stay blessed and keep seeking the truth of God's Word.